welcome back to Big Dan's Air Gun Review Channel. Today we're taking a bit of a break from our budget section, what we've been doing, looking at cheaper end rifles like your cheaper Springers, we've had the PR900 PCP and such in there, and as said, we're going to take a little bit of a detour from that and go back to, uh, well, let's say something maybe a little bit more interesting, especially if you're a member of the PCP crowd. Now, this box may be very familiar to you, especially if you've watched our Crowl Puncher Pro 500 video review. So let's crack this open and see what we're going to be looking at today. And also get that out of the way so we can see what we're looking at today. And in front of us right now, we have the standard model of the Crowl Puncher Pro. And as we said, this is not the 500 model, this is the standard model with the air cylinder on the end there instead. I think we can already say it's a pretty gorgeous piece of kit, but things can look amazing and be an absolute turd on the inside. So, why don't we move on to features and see exactly what you get with the gun. And then as per usual, we go to handling, then accuracy testing, and we'll also do a little bit of chronograph testing in between. So, let's take a look at the features of the Crowl Puncher Pro. Okay then, so, features. As always, we start off with the rear of the rifle, and you can see here a really quite nicely finished rubber butt pad. You can see there's a dimple pattern on the rear, and to the sides there's like a wavy sort of cutout pattern. Which again, doesn't really do a great deal, but it does definitely give the rifle a more, well, a sort of uh, a bit more flair, shall we say. Moving further along, now there is a reason why we're looking at the rifle from the right side and not the left, and that is to show that the Puncher Pro is definitely a right-handed stock. Now, it's very flat here, so a lefty, you might be able to get some use out of it, but it's worth mentioning, the higher up you go, you can feel there's a lip, it comes up here, which might cut into the face ever so slightly, which is a shame that there aren't more left-handed stocks, and again, this isn't an attack on the Crowl, it's an attack pretty much on everyone. Um, we are at least fair at Big Dan's Air Guns. Um, it's a shame there's not more left-handed options and um, ambidextrous style options with most air guns out there. The lefties are, you guys are sort of, um, well, you're not really sport for choice, we'll put it that way. Moving slightly further along, you've also got uh, this really nicely figured um, grip here with this really light, nice uh, cutouts towards the rear of the um, the action here just as for your, your thumb to rest in which is again a lovely little added touch the stocks on these crowls again we'll talk more about it when we get to the handling section but the stocks on these crowls are absolutely phenomenal now one thing that another thing sorry that separates this from the standard puncher is the fact that it uses a bolt action instead of the side lever that you find on most of them again we won't mention much about that at the minute we'll talk more about that when it comes to handling also nestled away there and to the side of the bolt you can hopefully see the safety which is currently on the safe position again talk a bit more about that when we come to the handling section slightly higher you can see you've got Crowell's sort of half dovetail rail half picatinny style mount on the top where you can see these sort of dovetail blocks we can see the um, scope is screwed into at the minute but it's also you can see there it's a lot wider at the base of the, um, the rail here that, that action where you can also place a Picatinny rail uh, mount as well, plug in there, which is always handy. So you, it's they're sort of the catering to both crowds sort of thing, which is always quite nice to see. Further down, you've got Crowell's two-stage adjustable trigger. This is one of Crowell's more standard units. If you look at the Puncher Pro 500 review, you can see it uses a completely different sort of trigger mechanism and blade. But again, we'll talk more about that in the handling section. You've got the Crowell Arms logo printed in here, stamped in with the Pro to the right side there. Again, lovely attention to detail, and it goes to show that there was absolutely, when it comes to the stock at least, we'll talk about the rest later on, there's no expense spared when it comes to making this thing really stand out and look the part. We've also got just up here the power adjuster, which you all know we'll be testing out a little bit later and seeing how it works. Now we know with the Puncher Pro 500 it was either, it seemed to be stuck on a high or low setting, there wasn't really an in-between. So we'll see how this one reacts in comparison to that. Slightly further down you've got this lovely design work here, I hope that's coming through in the camera okay. We've well, got the stippling here in the bottom and the Kral Arms Puncher Pro and the Kral logo in the, uh, the bottom of the stock here, which really, really does. <laughs> It, how can I put it? It's something you'd see on a considerably more expensive gun, not what you'd see here. I mean, even the Puncher Pro was a fight. We, the, well, the standard SRP, looking around 550 quid for them, which is what we charge. And it's an absolutely stunning, stunning bit of woodwork. It really is. And this, especially, in my opinion, and don't take this the wrong way, Puncher Pro 500 fans out there, I've got to say it, I think this is actually a much prettier gun than the 500, simply because it gets rid of that buddy bottle. Anyways, we're getting sidetracked now. I'll, you know what I'm like, I'll talk about these things all day long. Moving slightly further along, <laughs> I 
apologise, there's an aeroplane going overhead. You can see you've got the barrel here with the air cylinder underneath, and the air cylinder has a dust cap that is used by simply spinning the cap. Hopefully you can see there, now the port is wide open, you simply plug your probe in there and off you go. So again, always a handy feature when your gun comes with a dust cap protector, or again, dust protector. Um, you know, we had the PR900, which didn't come with one of them, which is always a little bit of a concern that something's going to potentially get in there. You've always got to check it before you give it a fill. But we're still not done. You can see there is a thread protector on the end of the barrel here. It does come with a threaded barrel as standard, which is the half-inch UNF. So you can screw a silencer straight in there, unlike the Artemis rifles, which use a metric thread, which is a little, pain, little bit of a pain in the buttocks, if I'm being completely honest. Slightly further down, again towards the stock, you have got a thread, and this is because the rifle comes as standard with a uh, screw. Sorry, I couldn't get my words then. A screw, and also a sort of um, a small piece of like a, an adapter rail, or I think it's like a Picatinny or maybe Weaver rail. And you can essentially, without drilling into the stock, put that straight through the thread here, and you can attach a bipod just like that. Brilliant idea. Moving slightly further along, still because we're still not done. As standard, the gun comes with two magazines, and they are pretty handy mags as well. As you can see there, they've got the shot count, or what you've got left on the mag printed in, and you can see that on the left-hand side of the gun as you've got the mag put in place, which again is always, it's nice, it's a nice little added feature. Another thing worth mentioning, just really quick, it's only a silly little thing, but the manual on these is even, I mean look at that. If you compare that to some of the more expensive makes that we get in, it absolutely spanks them, it really does. Even with the, the nice little pictures and colour and all that. Again, not that important, but they seem to be going really the extra mile with these. And in this box, you've also got that you just want to be fighting with, there's also a single shot tray as well. So, that is the features of the Crowl Punch Pro. Now let's move on to weight, and let's see just how heavy this thing is on the scales. Okay then, so, weight. Let's see what the Crowl Puncher Pro comes out at. And as you can see, if you was expecting this to be a light gun, you might end up just ever so slightly surprised. This pretty much eats most spring guns for breakfast, let alone PCPs. So we now know without the scope on, she's nine pounds and six ounces. So let's now put it to the shoulder and see what it's like there. As we always say, balance can mitigate weight. So let's chuck our scope back on, put it to the shoulder and see what we think. You thought we forgot, didn't you? Nope, before we get to the handling section, we have to talk about how to load the mag. Now, if you've seen the go the Crowl, sorry, um, Punch Pro 500 review, then you'll know how this works. Now, all you have to do is, you'll see there, there's sort of a, a little rubber toggle. And all you have to do is spin the mag all the way around, which then the toggle you can see is on the right-hand side of the first pellet hole. And then grab a pellet, and you can either do it through the bottom backwards or straight through the top like so. And then after that, you simply load the rest straight through the top until you're done. Simple as that. Might seem a little bit finicky before you get used to it, but it's actually, it's not a bad system. And it doesn't take too long to get used to the thing. And it sort of, after a while, it was a bit like second nature. But that's it for loading the mags. Now let's talk about handling. So then, handling. What do we think of the Crowl Puncher Pro? Well, despite the weight, it actually does shoulder very, very, very well. Now, don't get me wrong, there is definitely still quite a bit of weight there. Um, the thing what might, I might not feel it quite so much because, like, as you guys will know if you watch this channel, I do tend to prefer heavy guns, so it's more what I'm used to. Um, with this, when it comes to balance and such, which as we always say can, and, and it will mitigate some of the weight, it's still slightly further forwards. Now, bear in mind we have got this Conus 3 to 12 by 50 on top, which again could be more centralising the weight, so it might be more nose heavy with a lighter scope on there perhaps. Um, it's, still, it's, it's still pretty well balanced. I mean, to be fair, tipping down ever so slightly there. There, that's that's it. Pretty much bang on. So it's you're looking your your balance point is maybe just on. You can see that very the very front of the action here is mainly where it's balancing. Um, but it's quite a nice thing to shoulder and, and rest. And again, it might just be me where I'm used to heavier guns, but I can hold the thing incredibly still. And again, as we've been saying, that that cheek piece. Um, I, I showed the the, the right hand side of the gun, so the, the lefties out there can see it's a little bit flat on this side. It's not really designed for a left-handed shooter. 
For a right-handed shooter, though, you are in for a hell of a treat because I could sit here with my cheek on that cheek piece all day. And even the way that the stock is shaped across here for your fingers and thumbs just to nestle into. And you can see the design under here, that stippling. It does feel so nice in your palm. You wouldn't be dropping it anytime soon, I'll put it that way. Well, not because of the weather. Because of the weight, maybe, but not because of the, like, the weather making it slippery. So then, that's the stock and the weight we've talked about. But now we've got to talk about the real juicy stuff, and that is the trigger and that bolt action, which, as you know, is different from the standard punch-up. So, let's cock it and see what we think. It's not a light bolt, I'll put it that way. You might have seen that then. It's, it's very, not heavy, I don't know how to put it. It's mechanical, is the best way I'd put it. It's not like your Artemis M11 or um, a lot of the other guns out there where you can almost cock it with your little finger, something like that. The, the Super 10 was a little bit like that. Not quite as light as the M11, but nice, lovely, smooth bolt. This is, like I said, more mechanical. You could say maybe clunky, if I was to be really cruel. Um, to me, it more feels like when you have a go at a rimfire and you get that, as I said, mechanical that sort of feel to it. It's very much like that. Give it time, it might run in and smoothen out. To be honest, I actually, that this is just me saying that, this, obviously it's it's a review, it's an opinion. I quite like it. Um, like I said, it does remind me very much of a, a rimfire and it does feel like it will last pretty much forever. It does feel like a very solid bit of kit. But that's the bolt. Let's talk about the trigger. Now, I have to confess something about this trigger. And that is that out the box, at least this one, it was terrible. <laughs> the This standard unit, um, it was more like a three-stage than a two-stage. Um, we have since, though, adjusted the screw, the adjustment screw on the trigger itself, and it has transformed the trigger unit. It's still not a light trigger, not by any means, but at the same time, I mean, I'll just show you now. It's very short travel, and it has made it so much easier to get along with. So that's me against the second stage now. <laughs> Off she goes. And that's it. It's got a... How can I put it? The unit has a lot of potential. I'm sure if you as a proper tinkerer get in there, maybe polish things up a little bit, you could make a wonderful trigger out of the unit that you've got on here. Out of the box with tinkering, just with, um, well, what I call tinkering, adjusting the screw sort of thing. Even just adjusting the screw, it's turned it into not a perfect trigger unit, but I'd say a solid... Seven and a half, eight out of ten job. I put it that way. Not as light as the Artemis M16 trigger, which is more like a single stage, if we're being honest, than a two stage. Um, but it's not far behind when it comes to being predictable. You probably you'll find this maybe slightly more predictable than the Artemis trigger until you get used to just how light that Artemis trigger is. But it's not a terrible unit. And again, um, the Pro 500, I will say, is a better trigger unit. There's, there's no denying that. Uh, like we said, the 500 did come after this. They made some improvements, like with um, they went to the side lever, which is you, I think you saw was silky smooth, and the trigger itself. They've got sort of like a match blade trigger unit in there compared to the standard trigger unit, and the trigger on the 500 is much lighter than what it is on this. It is almost, it's pretty much you think shoot and you can get that thing to go off. Um, this isn't quite like that. This is a lot more, like I said mechanical that's 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 the friendliest word i can make about it and i quite like it to be fair it's a very mechanical feeling gun um so like i said yeah weight is pretty good well it's high it's if you're after a light gun we'll say it here and now this is not going to be your cup of tea um but it's not as bad as what you might think the the balance and such it does bring that back just a little bit and i actually find with it maybe slightly heavier scope like the conus 3 to 12 or 50 pro here it does seem to bring the weight back a little bit and you can keep that shouldered really nicely and again the feel of that stock is absolutely top notch let's just have another quick go with that bolt so you can see what i mean so you can almost hear it there that click it's more of a mechanical thing than what you find on most air guns and again there's one final little stage when you push that bolt closed so you've got that there and then you've got one last little like that and then she's ready to go just like that it's overall it's a very very pleasant feeling gun Get rid of that. very loud gun with uh i'm glad they threaded that end but um it's a very very overall very pleasant feeling gun um it's very much despite the stock it feels like the working man's pcp i think i said that about the super 10 and the um uh, the M16D as well. The only difference is, whereas they had slightly plainer looks, or the M16D 
you could label it as fugly if we're being honest with each other this is quite the opposite that is absolutely stunning if you want a gun and again we can't say too much because we've yet to accuracy test or chrono test but if you want a gun that looks stunning and feels like it will last absolutely forever it's this <laughs> but again can't say too much because if it shoots like absolute crap I mean it's only good for firewood really isn't it so before we get to the accuracy section let's move on to chronographing and the first test we're going to do is we're going to play with that little power adjuster in there so let's move on to the chronograph test so then power adjuster time let's see how this thing works we've got to put absolutely everything through its paces on this gun and uh, the power adjuster is one of the ones that I'm most excited to test so this is full power let's see what the gun's capable of this is with 8.3 grain super, uh, super domes 10.9 pretty good and let's now go minimum power and see if that works definitely sounded different 6.5 feet pounds and now let's potentially throw a spanner in the works let's go halfway because we know the punch pro 500 that we tested it was seen it seemed to be high and low halfway didn't seem to really do much so let's go halfway now 7.6 it definitely does make a difference so we know that we've got a pretty damn wide way, uh, range of adjustment on this thing and overall we can definitely say the Corral Power Adjuster on the Puncher Pro seems to work 110% so we know the adjuster works so next up let's move on to our actual full shot string and as per usual we're going to be looking at power, consistency and with the it's PCP shot count as well max fill on these is 200 bar but I can say out of experience and we did mention this I believe on the Puncher Pro 500 review you do not want to go to 200 bar on at least on this model in general or with the Crowls in general really and the reason behind that is because the Crowls are fitted with a burst disc and the burst disc itself is incredibly sensitive if it goes anywhere above 200 it will rupture and the reason behind that is because obviously with these PCPs you're dealing with compressed air and if you overfill compressed air there's always a slight chance that that cylinder is going to go nuclear and detonate in your hands and the people at Crowl they do pr prefer if anything that um, their customers keep all their limbs intact so they're fitted with a burst disc which is designed to rupture instead of the cylinder rupturing itself and taking a hand with it um, the only thing is like we said they are very sensitive and we're going to 190 bar because of that because realistically that is what I would recommend you fill this gun to so we're going to get a true shot count to what I would recommend you fill the gun to so there's no trickery or anything like that going on so enough jabbering let's go get this gun filled up we'll put it to 190 and we'll come straight back get the super domes back out 8.3 grain and see what the gun's capable of through the chrono so back in a bit Okay then, so, chrono report. We've run the thing, I'd say, to the point where it's running out of air. Well, what we're going to see with this, if you can see that there, hopefully, the camera isn't completely focusing on it for some reason. Um, what you can see here is that the gun seems to, throughout its shot string, it seems to very gradually drop, um, almost even from the first shot you can see here. I mean, we did have quite a few... Um, back-to-back -back shots, like you can see here, 11.59, 11.59. you got another 11.59 there. Well, as with some unregulated guns, it is pretty much it will very gently bleed off, which is what happened with the Krell. Now, we get around, we've got a spread of around 30 FPS by the 30th shot. So here you've got 774. If we go up here, you have got 803 is the best shot. So that's 26, 29. So you've got about almost a 30 FPS spread, which... It's not the worst that we've tested, but it's not the best either. Again, this gun is screaming for a regulator to go on it. But as we go down, the impressive thing with this is that, and it was a bit the same with the Punch Pro 500 as well, it's very gentle in the way that it does come down in power. You can see here, we're getting replica shots, or duplicates I should say, uh, going through here. 
and as we keep going you can see that it's, it is, as I said, very 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 gentle. As we get to the 50th shot you can see that it's dropped to 9.88 feet pounds and it's at that point I dragged it out for a few more shots and then by the time we got to 58th it had gone down to 9.42 and I thought yep that's pretty much the point where I think we better stop but it just proves my point even further as you can see here 732, 736, 735, 735, 730. It's very, very, very like soft in the way that it comes down. You'll have plenty of warning, we'll put it that way, when you're out, say, if you decide to take this hunting. Obviously, you've got your other information here. Spread 88, obviously we went throughout the entire shot string, so you are gonna have a pretty damn high spread. Um, I'm upset my shots per second though. You may have been able to tell that uh, we swapped from the two mags and went straight to the single shot tray after that as it is slightly quicker than having to load those mags up sort of thing whilst we're filming. And my shot per second was really impressive right until we uh, we switched to the single uh, shot tray. But um, yeah, overall I think when it comes to actual shot count, the gun's not too bad. You've got around... 30 shots before it does then start to, like I say, we, we lose the 11 foot pounds and we drop into the 10s. I mean, personally, you can easily hunt with a 10 foot pound gun. I can tell that out of experience. You don't need maximum power all the time. If I was to really push my luck, I'd say you had almost 50 full power shots out of it sort of thing but again that's a serious push and I will own up to that. It's getting a bit cheeky with that one. But 30 shots, Absolutely, 11.04. So the gun is very usable, we know what the gun's limits are. As we said, with a regulator, which this gun definitely deserves, or at least we think it does, so far everything's been pretty much top notch, especially now we've adjusted the trigger, but it does so far deserve a reg, but it could all fall apart when we get to the accuracy testing section. So, let's set our 25 yard target up, get this refilled, because I think it's uh, definitely going to need to be done now, and let's see how the rifle does at 25 yards. Now, like our last review, we're going to be doing the accuracy testing off camera as these video reviews are getting stupidly long. So what we're going to do is we've got a few tins of pellets, which I'll show you in a moment, which we're going to be testing. And then we'll film the best group that we get um, with the best tin of pellets. And obviously we'll put them all up by comparison so we can see which groups or which pellets, sorry, the gun likes and which ones that it does not like. So let's get this thing refilled and move on to accuracy testing. Okay then, uh, guys and girls, it's accuracy test time. You can see the rifle's on the right there. It's, she's been absolutely refilled. And to top it off, we're also going to be using the single shot tray for this test, as that's what you'll get the most consistent results with. Moving on to our pellets, we have a bit more of a broad selection this time, actually. On the left, we have our more premium pellets, the Air Arms Diablo Fields, the Remington FTTs, or HN FTT, Remington Thunder Barracuda, or again, HN Barracuda. And down here we've got the Rifle Premium Series and the JSB Exact RS Diablo. Now, the keen eye amongst you may notice that these exacts have already been opened. Um, this is me very professionally taping it back together again because, as you will have probably already known, the gun is already scoped and zeroed in. And you can guess what pellets I used. Now, these are the Express Diablos because I've already been a little bit cheeky. And I've already tried the standard JSB exacts, and when I was trying them, maybe the barrel wasn't loaded in at the time, they weren't a whole lot of good, so I thought there's not really much point putting them in here because I already know what the result's going to be. So I then tried the Express, and they was a bit better. That's all I'm going to say for now. So moving on, we have our medium range pellets. So you've got the RWS Superdomes, which we use for the chrono testing, which were, I've got to give kudos to RWS when it comes to actually weighing the pellets for that. They was pretty damn consistent, bang on 8.3. I think the most, the spread that we had when it comes to the grain of the pellet, uh, the lightest we had I think was 8.2 and the heaviest was literally, I think it was 8.6. So you only had 0.6 of a grain spread there. That's that's not bad, that's pretty good. I've had much worse than that. And next to that we've got the good old Accupels because why not? They I haven't had that much success with them yet, but you never know, this could be the one. And as always, we have our more budget brands. And top left here, we've got the, once again, professionally uh, retaped SMK Black. I mean, I might even just resell them, you know, you never know the difference. The SMK Black BS45 domes, which have actually done pretty well. I think it was the last review we did with the Milbro Sportsman, I think, in 2.2. They did exceptionally well. 
the top right of that we have got the new wasps which I have tested with other guns which may surprise you I've not tried them with this gun so I'm not going to say too much yet bottom left victory shocks we have used these before with the especially with guns like the Zavoria Kozak FC that we reviewed and they was absolutely well there was pretty much just one hole at 25 yards and to the right of that we've got the Remington Tyrant hammers which well we'll see I'll put it that way we'll see what happens with them so here's the pellets we're going to be using as we look up here, you can see the target is at 25 yards. And as mentioned, I'm going to do some off-screen shooting, but keep the results, and we'll record the best group out of the bunch. So I'm going to get to shooting, and let's see what the Kral Puncher Pro can do. OK, so here's the quick results of our testing before we uh, film our accuracy test. Now, what issue we're going to have today is that the wind and the weather in general is absolutely atrocious. Uh, hopefully you can see that. It's actually, this is as calm as it's been so far and you can tell we've had a crap load of rain down there with how wet that is on the ground. So we're going to try and keep it as tight as possible but again I can't change the weather unfortunately and this time of year this is when we're going to get it I'm afraid. Um, that being said we've actually done quite a lot of testing with this because it's an unregulated gun we've had to find the sweet spot in the pressure gauge where it's most consistent. Now with this, it seems to be from around 180 bar to around 140. So that's when we've done this testing. Now a lot of these groups, it, the gun does seem to be, not pellet fussy as such, but it doesn't group amazingly with maybe the brands you would expect it to group amazingly with. For instance, we've got our JSBs here, and you can see here in the wind, it is absolutely terrible. Now the funniest thing is these are the Express Diablos, you hopefully you can tell that there um, beneath my incredibly professional um, wrapping that you can see that's being done. Um, these are the Express models because they actually group better when we first tested the rifle off screen than the standard exact. But in this weather they are terrible. You can see here there's not really a group, you've got two touching up there and these are five shot groups. Yeah, not particularly good. The SMK Victory Shocks, now these could be maybe worth testing again, especially once that barrel is, is running a little bit more. If I can find my coins, which I think I have in my pocket, I do. If we just, let's take a look. I don't think that's, that's definitely not five pence worthy. Oh, it almost is. It's untidy. You've still got that one flyer off there, which is why it was discounted, but it's untidy, but it's almost five pence. But moving on, we've got super domes, which first two shots were absolutely brilliant. I thought, yes. But then the other three, yeah. Moving on, wasps. Again, almost good. I mean, that's never going to fit in a five pence, 20 pence, or you're not going to get the whole thing in the two pence, obviously, because of that flyer up there. But not too bad, actually, outshot the JSB on this very rare occasion. Remington Tyrant also showed potential. You've got an almost solid group there. Well, that's it under a five pence piece, but we've still got that one flyer real up high. And can I push my luck? almost it's peaking out a tiny little bit on the left side there but if we're being honest we'll say it's 20 pence all day long if you bar that flyer up there and again this barrel's nowhere near running or anything like that moving on to air arms diablo field and these once again unfortunately were a little bit all over the place you've got shots going you've got three up high and left and the other two were essentially the gun didn't know where it wanted to put the pellets so Air arms, not a whole lot of good. SMK blacks, even worse. Absolutely all over the place. Again, a little bit disappointing because, you know, I'm, I do quite like it when budget things shine. But uh, today, yeah, the blacks didn't do it for us. Good in other reviews, not so good in this one. Rifle premium series, about as good as the blacks. I mean, if you take a look, it looks like I've taken more shots than I have. I promise I haven't. These two went straight through. That one is blatantly a tumbling pellet. And that one is the exact same. You can see where, uh, here's the head of the pellet here. And you've got the skirt, which didn't penetrate. You can see it's left like a lead imprint just there. So yeah, rifle premium, no good. Here's the interesting one though. We've got the Remington Thunderfield target trophy pellets. Now these are pretty good. That's five shots down there. Let's get our 5P coin once again. And that's five pence all day long. And then after that, we did the Remington Barracuda. And once again, other than that one flyer, I'd be quite confident. Yep, 5P, uh, 5P group, sorry, all day long. And 
Acupel. Now these are here because although we've got one low and one high, the other three are in just one neat little hole like that. And again, if I do a little bit of uh, creative cheating and shuffle that up a little bit, you can see it all fits under a five pence piece except that one little flyer down low. So what I did to be extra cautious with this, as we want to make a proper job of this even with the weather, is I then did a full mag off screen to determine which pellet group the best. And again, the wind did pick up a little bit with this and we've got to unfortunately take our shots while we can because we don't want to stretch this one out for another bloody month like it took us with the, uh, I think it was the Milbro Sportsman. So I did a full mag after this. And here's the Acupels. Like I said, wind picked up. Because of this, they scattered and opened up just a little bit. You got a group down there. Then after that, I took aim at the one up here and you can see there just off to the right after a very minor zero adjustment. So not very good to, with today's weather, unfortunately. Moving slightly further on, we then go to the Barracudas. Now these are much better. And again, the wind here is terrible. Um, we've also got a little bit of rain coming down. As you'll see, the ground is incredibly wet. And the main cluster is almost five pence worthy, even in the terrible wind that we have today. So pretty damn good. And then the Remingtons, let's take a look. The Remys, not quite as good. If you take a look here, I mean, there's no chance. That's fit number of five P piece. We actually got, I think we had a very similar group to that. At, um, our 50 yard or 50 meter grouping that we did with the Crowell Puncher Pro 500. So the fact that's doing that at 25 yards with the standard Puncher Pro, goes to show just how rough it really is. You might be able to hear it's picking up again now. But our champion off screen is the Remington Thunder Barracuda. And what we're gonna do, because we've been filling the gun each and every time for one of these tests, we're gonna fill it back up to around 180. And we're gonna see if we can capture a few shots on camera so you can see just how much potential this rifle has. Hopefully we can mimic that, maybe we can better that. We'll have to wait and see. We're gonna do some very minor zero adjustments so as we're at least a little bit closer to the bullseye there and see how we get on. So, let's get the uh, rifle all pumped up, let's get the Remington Thunder Barracudas, and let's see what the rifle can do on camera. Okay, so sorry about that. This is what happens when uh, you try and do things, well, unscripted, we'll put it that way. As you can see, the wind is actually so strong, it's blown the wood over that we were sitting on and the GoPro went with it. The target is still the same as what it was before. We'll uh, carry on where we, were, where we uh, left off, but like I said, the weather today is mucking fizzerable. So then, accuracy test results. First off, sorry about making you all do backflips uh, back there. As I said, the weather is quite rough today. But here we are with our full, well, I think we put 14 shots through the gun, um, which is pretty much a full mag, full 14 shot group. And as you can see here, it's a little bit stretched, but it's not actually quite as bad as it looks because if you look at the main cluster and we just get a five pence piece, We've only got, duh, 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 should we say three there? Three, you've got five out of 14 that have only just come out of, well, I say only just, but it's out of our five pence group. So that's not too bad, especially when you consider, I mean, it's actually the calmest it's been so far, but if I just pan you back across, if you can see that, especially the trees up there, the way they're blowing, it's not pretty at the minute. Well, as you saw, it was enough to, um, knock a block over just a second ago, so that just goes to show how extreme it really was. But it's actually, it's not too bad. I mean, like we said, considering the weather conditions, there's a vertical spread there. And like we said, most of it you can see there is under a five pence piece, which is pretty good. I'm quite confident when the barrel, especially maybe if the barrel had a clean, give the barrel a clean, let it let itself in, that group would be so much tighter. And again, 
You can hear the wind is picking up once again now. There's something hitting the roof, but it's not rain. I think it's something coming off the trees outside. Um, yeah, with actual calm conditions, that would I'd be very confident that's all going to be under that five pence piece. I mean, you saw it earlier, the testing that we did off screen. A, a lot of them, well, I think it was not a lot of them, say three of the God knows how many tins we had. The majority of it then was under the five pence piece and like we said this gun is not run in it's not had a barrel clean nothing like that the only thing we've noticed with it is that it's the sweet spot like we said is between 180 and around 140 ish bar um the go too high starts to scatter just a little bit and too low obviously when you start dipping into the 130s 120s it starts scattering again so keep it there and she is pretty damn good like i said I can't really see any other gun, if I'm being honest, doing any better than this. That's that's pretty damn good, <laughs> to be fair, considering the conditions when you've got wind strong enough out there to knock a bloody log over and send a camera flying. But yeah, that's that's pretty good. I'm quite impressed with that. So that's it for accuracy testing. So let's move on now to the final verdict with the Kral Puncher Pro. Now, normally, like with our other Kral, we try and do something funky and put a target out to, say, 50 yards or something like that. Today, if I'm being honest, nah. <laughs> That's, that, I'm afraid I don't think there's going to be a whole lot of point in doing that because we're probably going to miss the entire card, how rough it is out here. So we might have to end it this review at our 25-yard marker. But... Overall accuracy testing, I am pretty impressed. I didn't expect any of the group to fit under five pence with the conditions that we got today, but the majority of it did, so that is a win in my eyes. So let's move on now to final verdict and let's see what we really think of the Kral Puncher Pro. Okay then, so final verdict of the Kral Puncher Pro. What do we think? Well, it's definitely not going to suit everybody, that's for sure. And what we're going to start with at the minute are the negatives. Um, I'm usually a what's the bad news before the good news kind of guy. So uh, why not start with that with this one? Well, first things first, it's a heavy brew. Um, as you saw over the scales, I believe it's around nine pounds when we weighed the thing. And yeah, if you're looking to look into this for something like walked up shooting style of hunting or something like that, unless you're a, 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 a thicker set person, shall we say, or just a bigger frame person, um, this is probably not going to be for you. There's a fair bit of heft to this gun. It might have actually been slightly heavier to the Crowl Puncher Pro 500 that we weighed, actually. Um, I can't entirely remember. It's so long ago since we reviewed that. Um, but uh, no, it's not a light gun at all. Um, the balance is actually pretty good. I mean, it's not quite dead center, like such as with the um, ever so slightly ahead of the trigger. It's more sort of, if you can see like the center point where the camera's looking at now, it's sort of more along here. So it's not quite center, it's slightly far forwards, but it's not bad. I mean, I'm used to those sort of guns. Um, I shoot a lot of springers where sometimes you get the weight which is far forwards, especially on the underlevers. And that for me, it fits me like a glove. But again, it might not be for everyone. This isn't a negative, this is more of a neutral, and this is about the trigger itself. Out the box, like we've already said, it's not the best. It's okay, but it's not the best. Um, it felt more like a three-stage than a two-stage trigger, but all we've done is slightly adjusted the trigger using the screw that uh, is just in front of the trigger blade that you can access through the trigger guard there, and it has made it a very predictable trigger and the actual pull on it is very short if I'm honest it's not bad um, there's definitely it's not gonna be as light as some of the other triggers out there but just adjusting that screw makes it incredibly manageable and very very predictable as well which is is obviously one of the main things you're looking for when it comes to a trigger so again out the box not great if you couldn't adjust it it would be a negative but you can turn it into a pretty good piece of kit simply by adjusting that screw so again we call that a neutral with adjustment pretty damn good um, the other, this is neutral, not negative, um, it is unregulated, and as you can see through our shot string here, starts off pretty high, it comes in hot at 11.89, but as you go on, you can see it begins to drop down straight away, and by the 30th shot, you're just beyond that, say 32, you can see there, it goes from high 11 to then you're sinking into the 10s, which to give it some credit, it does sit into the 10s for a little while before dipping into the 9s and such, so you've got around 30, 35 full power shots out of it before it starts coming down. Now again, you could adjust that power adjuster, turn it down just ever so slightly, and you'd probably get a few more shots out of it. Turn it, say, three quarters of the way, have it sit at, say, 10.5, 10.7, and I'm sure you'd probably be golden. 
we would do that test now but unfortunately you might be able to see it is getting quite dark at the minute and i would highly doubt that the uh chrono would pick it up but it's very much a case of we're gonna have to get this done while it's well as calm as it's gonna get i'm afraid so yeah the gun it's unregged essentially you do have to find the sweet spot in the um your shot string like we said around 185 180 ish bar down to around 140 ish and it's pretty much golden um, a little too high it can scatter a little bit too low and obviously your aim point's going to drop and it will open up a little bit more other thing worth mentioning again it's a neutral it's not well it's a positive really the gun out of the box is very loud incredibly loud um, it's actually the loudest unsilenced gun I think that I've ever heard but you do have that thread on the end and there's a thread protector on there at the moment for a silencer so again it's very much it's a neutral situation it sort of balances itself out now we get into the oh one other thing obviously worth mentioning the bolt you can see there it's a neutral again i quite like it it's a very mechanical feeling bolt but again it is a slightly heavier feeling bolt at the same time it's not as smooth as what you'll find on, say, an Artemis M11. It's not as smooth as what you'll find on uh, um, even a little Brocock um, Compato, something like that. It's a pretty, it's a stiff bolt. It doesn't need yanking, but you, how can I put it? Don't be shy with it. I'll put it that way. But it's a very well-made thing, and it does not feel like it's going to break anytime soon. I'll put it that way. And it does, I quite enjoy the feel off of it, actually. That, that click, click, as you open and close it and that's a really daft thing to say and I do apologize um, but you have to experience it to sort of know what I'm talking about it's a very positive feeling bolt we'll put it that way so now we get on to the positive stuff and that is that the overall finish of the rifle is superb I don't think there's even if you're not a Kral fan you might not even be a PCP fan which usually I'm not but even I have to say that is a beautiful looking rifle it really is and despite the weight and again the balance is still slightly further forwards but it does come to the shoulder really nicely and if you're used to heavyweight guns that is just going to melt into you when you shoulder that thing the cheek piece on it you could almost fall asleep on that thing how comfortable it is the finish on the thing is superb the stock is maybe a tiny little bit dry looking as standard but you get some oil on that and i'm guarantee that this thing will be absolutely it will be a showstopper we'll put it that way even at the minute, if you was down the range with it, people would be walking up to you going, ooh, what's that? It's such an eye-catching gun. It really is. And this might be blasphemy to the people that like like the Crowl Puncher Pro 500, but I am going to say it. I do think the Standard Pro is the prettier rifle. It just has to be said. Even the Standard Trigger Unit, which again, like we said, the, the Puncher Pro 500 is better. There's no denying that. But it just... That, that target sort of trigger look sort of... Um, I don't know. It's just like a little... A, a wart on a a beautiful picture if you know what i mean or a picture of a woman's face it, it puts me off a little bit that just just goes with the rifle so much better the other thing we'll mention obviously important thing is accuracy now this was in some truly atrocious weather and unfortunately i can't really change that and like we said um it's the 25th of october as we film this at the moment and it is miserable here in the uk with high winds nasty rain you name it so Bear that in mind. As you saw, it actually blew the camera over and knocked the wind, the uh, wood stand that it was sitting on, which uh, wasn't a whole lot of good. But as you can see here, the majority of the group, this was the Remington or HN Thunder Barracudas. And you can see here, the majority of the group sits under five pence piece with only five, well, we'll say flyers to be fair, because, uh, well, let's face it, they are, even if the wind was probably very highly likely the cause. Um, we've got five flyers going high, but the majority of the group, which was 14 shots, sits perfectly under the five pence piece. And the entire group itself, just to show just how sort of tight the thing actually is, fits under a two pence piece, or thereabout. You can see there's a dear little scuffed bit down there. But the, the rest of the group fits under a two pence piece, which, again, considering the weather conditions, which you might be able to hear the wind blowing a little bit now, um, that's actually pretty damn good, it must be said. Now, I do have, however, well, we won't go on to the, the bad, real bad news at the minute. We'll still talk about the positives just for now. Um, other positives being the power adjuster works incredibly well. In fact, as we just said, you could probably eke even more shots out of it and probably get an even flatter shot curve through it if we maybe turn that adjuster down just a little bit. And it's great to have it. As you saw, we could go from, hang on, I'll just get it back and we'll have a look actually. 
if I can get my phone to work. There we go. All right, so here we are with our chrono testing with the power adjuster. You can see there that was on max, and we'd had a few shots through the gun, so it wasn't doing the 11.8 that it does when it's freshly filled. Uh, you got a 10.9 there, and then you got low, which is coming through 650, and around medium you had 7.6. So it's it's a good bit of kit, it must be said, and usually power adjusters, you're going to find them on guns that are around £1,000 on your FXs and things like that. The fact that you can get them on a gun that's, well, I think RRP'd at around 500 quid, or you can find them for around 500 quid, that is absolutely phenomenal. It really is. But now we have the negative that's got to be said, and anyone who's looking at these, it might break your heart just a little bit. I don't think we've mentioned this yet, but... It is now a discontinued model, I'm afraid. The Crow Puncher Pro is essentially no more. The 500 is taking its place, um, which is understandable. The slight improvements the gun's got, you've got that nicer trigger and it's a silky smooth side lever action, whereas you can see the Puncher Pro here is a bolt. Um, so again, if you can see one and you're desperately after one, it might be worth maybe looking into it because who knows how much longer you're going to be able to get these for. I got in touch with um, Range Right, who are the importers for these and who are sponsoring this video, and they basically said to me, nope, I haven't got any more of them. So yeah, if you're after one and you've got one local to you, pick it up as soon as you can because as we said, we don't know how much longer that's going to be around for. But overall, back to positives. Put a, turn that frown upside down. If you do find one, you're getting a ton of kit for your money. On top of what we've already mentioned, you're also getting this rather beautiful case that comes with it. I say beautiful because it's free, um, but it is a good case. You can see here, it's got a nice bit of plastic on it. It's not some cheap crap that you usually get, and it is all completely foam lined. Also to go with the gun, you get two mags as standard and a single shot tray. Now the single shot tray, it's not the best I've ever used. It's a little bit probably tell it's a bit plasticky but it's a free single shot tray with the gun I mean you can't really complain most guns you, you pretty much just get the mag or you have to buy if you want single shot tray you have to buy a single shot only rifle like BSA and such do and air arms as well I believe with this you have access to both and even the Artemis guns it's better than them because you get two mags a standard instead of the one that you get with the M16 although obviously the P15 you also get two but that's a ballpup and it's too small for me so I don't like it um, <laughs> nah they're a brilliant little gun but they just don't suit me at all um, but no overall the Crowl Puncher Pro it's definitely worth a look we'll put it that way and even as a collectible it's an absolutely lovely lovely gun and if you're not a big fan of the looks go in and shoulder one. In fact, that's the absolute best advice I could give for one of these. If you're thinking about one, shoulder it first. You'll either feel the weight and you'll turn your nose up and say no thanks and get something lighter, which is good because at the end of the day, you're going to want a gun that fits you. And if a gun's too heavy, a gun's too heavy. You shouldn't have to fight your rifle. But at the same time, on the other end of the spectrum, you're probably going to more likely shoulder it and you're just going to, well, pretty much, you're going to walk away with it. Well, I'll put it that way. <laughs> it is seriously, seriously nice. It really is. Um, but no, that's it for this uh, Big Dan's Air Gun review. Thanks ever so much to Range Right um, for sponsoring this review. Um, if you're an RFD like myself, maybe watching this, definitely get in touch with them. They're a fantastic company to deal with. And if you're after any more information regarding Crow Rifles, Crossman, you name it, because they are now the uh, main importers for Crossman into the UK, give them a call straight away and they'll help you out any way they can. Thanks ever so much for watching, everyone. Um, we will try not to take quite so long with the video reviews from now on, even if it means we have to fight through the weather. Next up, we actually have a really, really interesting PCP. We've got another one we're doing, um, but it sort of counts as a budget entry. Um, it's the brand new Remington Air Cobra, and we're gonna have a. We should be having them turn up. What would it be? Three days after this review is filmed, actually, this section here. So. We'll get that tested, run it through its paces, and um, see what that can do. And as we said, it sort of counts as a budget gun because, well, SRP is around 399 for a PCP, so I think we can include that. But no, as we were saying, getting sidetracked now. Thanks ever so much for watching, guys, and I do apologize so much about taking so long for these video reviews to come out. We are trying to get them out as quick as we can. As always, if you ever have a question or comment, leave it down below. We do read all of them. I have seen your comments about the sound quality. We are trying to get something sorted out. We had a few lapel mics for the um, camera that we use now, which is a GoPro Hero 5. Great little camera, but the lapel mics we've had are absolutely crap. 
So we're going to try something else, maybe get a new camera, we'll see what's going on, and try some different lapel mics perhaps. So you're not constantly hearing uh, the wind in the background and things tapping and all sorts of horrible background sounds you don't want to listen to. So if you've got any air guns you want us to look into, leave a comment down below and we'll get onto it as soon as we can. Um, it is obviously easier if it's a gun that we stock, we can get it in and take a look, but even if it's not, by all means, leave a comment down below, and if we can, if I can pick one up local secondhand, I'll get it done, and we'll get it filmed and reviewed for you. So, thanks ever so much for watching, everyone. Any questions or criticisms, leave comments down below, and as always, take care.